So I guess the, since it seems like the um, the flapper thing is what I'm assuming it is is on the inside. It means we're gonna take this thing apart. Uh, these are 13 millimeter nuts here. The first two are just jam nuts, and then it looks like there's. The cup on walking up on it. And there might be something else in here I don't know about. Like, no, okay, okay, they're like nut plated on the bottom. And that's for about them falling out inside the drum, I think. And the, a concern there. I don't want to tear into anything I don't have to. So I removed the weight here so I can at least see uh, the next layer down. flat on one side. I guess maybe one of them can use that. I cared about 25 pounds. And I say offhand, I didn't really reveal anything. Maybe I'll have to go in through uh, I think that's the the heater for the dryer. I might be pulling that and then see if I can see in around above the drum. So anyway, end of the video there. So it looks like it might be easy to get into here. In order to pull the heater, I got a Loose, take this off. Pull screw here. There's one screw right down in there. Then there's another one right there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, but to get to those two down in there, I had to pull the screw off of here, off of here. Uh, number two Phillips will do that. Uh, and pop that out. And then... I got a screw here and here so it looks like four screws and I'll be able to then pull the, the uh, dryer heater out um, and then I'll see if I can look down inside to there because I looked inside the drum there's no panel in the drum so you can reach up inside or do anything so they didn't allow access that way um, so if that doesn't work um, I'll make another video. Okay, bye. Eh, so here we are again. So, uh, wasn't as easy as I thought about. Um, those four screws did do it, but you also have to take a screw out of here, lift that stuff out of the way. And when you take this off, there was also a tie wrap right around here. So you have to cut that tie wrap and you have to rock this back and take this two screws out and there's cut a tie wrap and there's a metal band right there you gotta get a loose knit too in order to pull the heater up and that's actually a vent right inside here pulls the air up through here through the fan and back down i guess something like that or the other way actually it must be the other way but uh so that's where I'm at now. Be real careful when you pull these guys out. Because if you drop it down in there, I don't know how you'd ever get it back. So uh, anyway, uh, continue on we go. Oh, and make sure you unplug it before you start working on it. There are some hot stuff in there. Wow, well, I guess this has been a big mistake. So, yeah, so I, anyway, so you know, I pulled that off of there. Right, 
This goes inside there, and it had a tie wrap around it, and it had a band fastened to it. Okay, so there's no access into there. Uh, after looking at it, I realized there's no flapper thing anywhere inside there. In fact, if you use this dryer in the ventless mode, you have to cap that thing. Um, if you're using in vented, of course, you leave it open and it's vented to outside, which means it's not 100% circulating. It's going to always be exhausting outside if you put it in uh, ventless mode. It's still going to be exhausting outside. This is normal. So uh, if you don't cap it, you're going to end up with with me i have condensation on the cold water pipe and dripping down behind uh, because of the heat in here uh, and of course i got all that uh, lint that's collected on the wall and that's from about six loads i think um so yeah uh, so now i got to put this all back together but now you've seen how to tear into one of these things, so I guess this is my mistake. And I'm going to go ahead and post this anyway, because this educational material. Okay, um, I'll be putting it back together. Uh, it was easy to take apart to this point. The, the cautions are don't lose your screws. Number two Phillips does it. Uh, and I think it was 13 millimeter uh, wrench took those bolts out and they, and they're just the, like the carriage bolt square base and they just lock in like that so that's for the counterweight or the vibration weights whatever you want to call it and uh, this of course is soap dispenser and stuff these are the hose coming in too there's your water valves you have to change your water valve they're right there pretty open um, I'm, there's, I don't know what that is back there, some kind of all the grounding points and there's some electrical contact points and stuff. So some nice springs. Uh, this does rattle around like that. Um, anyway, so I'm going to put it back together and I guess I'm, today I'm going to drill a hole in the wall, put in a rain cap. Oh well. All right, this is John. Have fun. Bye. So I guess it's all, all back together. Got to put the lid on. But I'm going ahead and uh, cut the, a hole for the dryer fan. I got to figure out where the center is. And, and this closet I got it in is uh, I don't want to have to pull it out of there because I got to turn it sideways, pick it up, take it out. That's more work I want to do, so I'm going to pull it forward, do a little twist. But I got to get a drill through and find the center of the hole. So the easiest way to find the center of the hole, you can see I got some little marks on the wall. And what I've done is I've taken the, my socket and put it just like that. And then I went with a pencil around it. And I did that in several places around here. So that it shows me about where straight out is from the pipe. So then I got to figure out where the center of that is, being in a four inch arc around there. And then put a hole in the middle and then and drill bit out. And then I'll use a hole saw because then I'll be able to get in here. I can't get in here with a drill. Uh, so then I'll use a hole saw and I'll cut back in this way and hopefully it'll line straight up with that pipe which just happens to barely miss my uh, drain pipe but not by much because I am right up against the side of the cabinet here so anyway uh, so I'm gonna do that and then hopefully things will look a little better in here I won't have high humidity and uh, lint all over the place and dripping water from condensation off the cold water valve back there. Well, there it is. It's back in. Display looks like that. 
and it all back together the top just sets on drops down two screws from the back this is that easy you have to lift it up and pops off uh, I did match the dryer the vent back up um, and turn the water back on everything looks pretty good um, I did have to use a flat blade screwdriver on the 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 heater housing that went down the front the, the clamp there was flat blade uh, where the others for Phillips so I don't know what the deal was there but hey uh, so everything's all ready and to go and I guess that's it uh, water hooked back up um, I put Ben on the outside wasn't quite the vent I want. I can always change it later. Uh, was an interesting experience. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you ever wanted to see what the inside of one looks like, well, that's what it looks like. So we'll see what the difference is between um, vented and ventless. See if it dries faster. It seemed to take almost three and a half hours to dry a standard load. Uh, so we'll see if it's a little bit faster when we do the the uh, vented so anyway uh, maybe I'll do a follow-up not sure but at least uh, if you ever wanted to see the inside of one now you did okay bye okay so this is my equator 4400 I've installed it I got it used it's about six months old um, and I put it in and I run a couple loads through it. I had it in a condensing mode and I end up with that on the wall. Apparently the flapper that closes so you go between vent and ventless doesn't work well it still leaks now i know the fan there's a second fan in here that pulls the air out if you have it in vented mode that goes on and off with the switch but it still seems to leak air so it comes out of the back of the drum through this soft hose here and then there's a fan in here there's a little fan like it's in your computer uh, but this is what the inside of it looks like it's just two screws one here one here in the back um it holds the top on so you take those two screws phillips head comes off and this is what it looks like inside uh, so i guess i'm going to be going a little deeper to figure out why the little door doesn't close back there. Uh, eventually I'm going to vent this so I can have the option but at the moment um, I'm just hoping to do a quick install and use it and then when it ain't raining and cold outside I could go ahead and add a vent but I may be doing that soon anyway. So uh, everything seems to be working good. The uh, dryer uh, exhaust is all put in and it all lined up about right. A um, few just extra comments. Um, it does do a lot better job of drying uh, with exhaust going out um, instead of the condensed version. Um, in fact, I've been uh, stopping it uh, a half hour before it's, the dry cycle's done and taking stuff out uh, if I don't have a, a heavy load. A uh, heavy load, they say two-thirds filled. Um, and of course, if you do things like uh, fluffy towels, you have to leave them in for the full time and don't put more than one or two of them in. Uh, so we have the other type of towels that aren't so fluffy. Um, but if you put in, you know, a couple of pairs of blue jeans, shirt, socks, underwear, um, that's a, not a bad load. Does it pretty quick. Um, I can usually take the stuff out of the dryer cycle early 
when you use vanless. Um, if you have too much stuff in, wrinkle is a problem. I don't think it tumbles. You know, it doesn't, like in a big drum, how the clothes fall when they're in there, keep them, you know, going, moving. Uh, in the smaller drums, it doesn't do that well of a job, so wrinkle is a problem. The lighter load, the less the wrinkles, or pull it out early and sometimes flatten it out or hang it up. Um, that works. Um, other than that, uh, it seems to work good for a little apartment. Uh, you know, RV, we're in a 36-foot mobile suite made by DRV. Uh, anyway, I think that's probably it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was educational to you. All right, bye.